Welcome to Precalculus. This is the notes for chapter 2.1 called quadratic functions. And so we're going to be looking at quadratics, which has an exponent of 2, and it's going to be graphing parabolas. Okay, so hopefully you're already familiar with this. We're just going to be exploring the difference mainly between these two forms. So this first form, first form is what we call the vertex form, and um, it's when you have your trinomial in the in the completed square form and it's great because whatever value is in here for h and whatever value is in here for k will give you your vertex okay and your line of symmetry is always going to go through that vertex so <coughs> that will be super helpful in gra in, for graphing because then you can pick a point to the right plug it in and um, have a matching point on the left and be able to do your graph that way. The other form is called the general form, which is basically just your regular trinomial. If you can factor it, great. It's going to give you your intercepts on the x-axis, or you can simply find the x value of the vertex by plugging in the value for b into, and the value for a into the negative b over 2a going to spit out a y and that'll give you your vertex that way okay so there's two different ways right, we we're looking at all right so when you're asked to graph um, and you're given your equation in vertex form you can simply take the opposite uh, value of this number right here which is negative three and the opposite value or and this value that's right here which is negative four and that'll give you the vertex so i put it right here in the middle of my t-chart and then I picked a point on each side, negative 2 and negative 4. And if you do this correctly, you really only need to do one of them because you should have symmetrical, meaning you get the same answer on both sides. So let's plug in a negative 2. If we plug negative 2 in right here, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So you should get the same answer if you plug in uh, negative 4. Okay, so let's plug in negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. And 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So you're going to see that on each side of the vertex, you should have the same answer as long as you're the same distance. All right, when we plug in negative 1, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. And so once you've filled in a couple points on your t-chart, go ahead and graph them, and you should end up with your parabola. Okay? If you start getting weird stuff, you're probably um, having positive and negative issues. So watch your signs, as always. Okay? All right. So here's another one that's in uh, vertex form. So to get the vertex, you want the opposite of this number, which is 1. And you want this number, which is 2, so that's going to give you your vertex. Put that right in the middle, and then pick some values um, on each side. Now, if you picked 0, um, you would act and, if you, and if you picked 2, you would actually end up with fractions. So you're going to notice that I plug in a 3, okay? And you'll see why in just a second. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Sorry, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, okay? And so when you end up with a, a multiple of 4, you're going to divide by 4, which 4 divided by 4 is just 1, but there's a negative sign out front, so it's negative 1, and then negative 1 plus 2 is 1, okay? If we hadn't skipped 2 and we plug 2 in there, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1, and then you have to take 1 fourth of 1 and you get this, uh, you're going to get fractions and stuff, which is fine if you like dealing with that, but if you realize, okay, I need multiples of 4 because the denominator right here is 4. Okay. All right, let's plug in 5. 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 squared is 16, 4 goes into 16 four times. The opposite of that is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So we want to graph all these points after we've plugged in all of these. And notice that this is the same as this, and this is the same as this. So that's what makes our graph symmetrical when we have a parabola. 
All right, so let's talk about completing the square. So what if you get your what if you get your quadratic and it's just in trinomial form, and you want to change it into um, vertex form? So you're going to do something called completing the square. Hopefully you've done this before. But basically what you're going to notice about this trinomial is that it's not easily factorable, right? There aren't two numbers that multiply to get 4 and add or subtract to get 6. So we're going to take that 4 and move it outside of the parentheses. And we're going to find this magic number that completes this square of x squared plus 6x. And you're always going to want a positive number. So how do you get the number that goes right here? Well, you're going to divide by 2, and then you're going to square it. So we're going to take this 6, which is our b value. So 6 is our b value. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then 3 squared is 9. So we're going to add a 9 right here. Now, since we're on the same side of the equal sign, we have to, um, we have to subtract 9. Why? Because... 9 minus 9 is 0. So we're not actually technically adding anything to this side of the equal sign. It's just going to be able allow us to factor this because now this is easily factorable, right? 3 times 3 is 9 and 3 plus 3 is 6. So our binomial here becomes 3, x, sorry, x plus 3. And then we com combine these two numbers over here, 4 minus 9 is our negative 5. So let's try one that's a little bit harder because that one was pretty easy. Okay, Why is this one harder? Because it has a leading coefficient. So we have an a out here of 2. So I'm going to take that 2 and I'm going to factor it out. I'm going to put it in front of the parentheses right here and I'm going to not only divide the 2x squared by 2 but I'm going to divide the tw uh, negative 20x by 2 to get me the negative 10x then I'm going to complete the square here, okay? All right, so I need to find my magic number that goes right here. So I take this b, which is negative 10, divide it by 2. So negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. But anytime you square a positive or a negative number, it always ends up positive because negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. So your magic number that goes here is 25, but you're not actually adding 25 because there's a 2 out front, you're actually adding 50. So outside the parentheses, you need to subtract 50. Okay? All right. So now this becomes easily factorable because 5 times 5, or actually negative 5 times negative 5, is positive 25. And negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. The 2 out front is going to... Um, make it wider wider or narrower, and then 41 minus 50 is minus 9. That's going to help us get the vertex, okay, if you're asked to graph it. All right. All right, so what do you do when you have a negative sign out front? Okay, so we're going to pull out a negative like it's negative 1, and then everything inside the parentheses is going to switch switch signs. So this negative x squared because becomes positive x squared. This negative 8x becomes positive 8x. And then we can figure out what number is going to be our magic number to go right here. Okay, so we're going to take this b, which is 8x, or 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So we write plus 16 right here. But we're actually um, subtracting 16 because there's a negative sign out front. So that if we distributed that out, it would be minus 16. So we're going to write plus 16 right here. And then this is easily factorable because 4 times 4 is 16 and 4 plus 4 is 8. Make sure you drop down that negative sign out front. And then negative 6 plus 16 is 10. So now it's in vertex form. Okay? All right. This one's a little bit trickier because we've got a fraction. So we're going to pull out the one half and then um, we're not going to take half of this number. We're actually going to double it because if we take half of 24 we get 12x. So it's going the other direction. And then we want to complete the square. So we're going to take the b 
the value of b, which is 24. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 12 squared is 144. And so it looks like we're adding 144 here, but we're actually adding half of 144, which is 72. Okay, so out here, we should be subtracting 72. I wrote the wrong number right here. So make sure you write minus 72, not minus 62. And then we're going to simplify this, right? So 12 times 12, so the 12 goes here. Make sure you drop down that one half out in front, your coefficient. And then this should be minus 5, not plus 5. Okay? All right. If you're asked to graph a parabola, um, one of the ways to do it is just to simply find the vertex. Okay? So if your equation is x squared plus 8x plus 11, to get the value of the x term of the vertex, you're going to take half of b over 2a. So your b is 8. So negative 8 over, right, it's right here, negative 8 over 2 times a, and there's a 1 out in front of that x squared that you can't see. So divided by 2, that means your the value of your x part of your vertex is negative 4. So I wrote that right here, negative 4. Now we plug that negative 4 into this trinomial and see what we get out for the y. So negative 4 squared is 16. 8 times negative 4 would be negative 32. Add those together and then add 11, you get negative 5. So the vertex should be right here at negative 4, negative 5. So if your vertex is at negative 4, negative 5, we're going to make a t-chart and we're just going to go to the right and left of that vertex, a negative 3 and a negative 5, plug those in. So negative 3 squared is 9, 8 times negative 3 is negative 24, plus 11, you should get negative 4, which means you're going to get negative 4 for this one. So graph those two points. Then let's try uh, negative 2. Plug in negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16, plus 11 more is negative 1. So this one's negative 1, and this one's negative 1. So once you get the general shape of your parabola, go ahead and draw it in then you're good to go. All right. All right, so for this, this one, okay, we're going to graph. So we've got some fractions in here, but we can still find the um, vertex. So the vertex, to get the x value, you're going to use the opposite of b over 2a, okay? So the b value is negative 3. So you're going to want the opposite of that, which actually makes it positive over 2 times a, which is 1 half. 2's cancel, you get 1. So negative 3, sorry, the opposite of negative 3 is 3 over 1. 3 over 1 is 3. So the x value of your vertex is 3. So I'm going to put it right here. Well, I put it right here and right here. And then we want to get the y value. So we're going to plug that 3 in back in the original equation. 3 squared is 9, half of 9 is 4.5, then negative 3 times 3 is, neg is negative 9, minus 5 halves, you can punch it in your calculator if you need to, or write it out, and let's see, what do we get? Uh, negative 7, okay? So if you have graph paper, then go over to 3, go down 7, put your point, and there's your vertex. And you'll be able to easily see that to the right and to the left um, would be 4 and 2. But if you start plugging those in, you're going to get some weird decimals. So try 5 and 1. So let's plug in a 5. 5 squared is 25. 20, half of 25 is 12.5. Negative 3 times 5 would be negative 15. Minus 5 halves. Punch it in the calculator. You should get negative 5. So negative 5 goes here, and negative 5 goes here. And then do this, plug in 7, or plug in negative 1. You should get the same answer for both. Graph a few of those points, and that'll give you the general shape of your parabola.